welcome back to part three. Thank you everyone for all your support, your wonderful comments. Um, if you can, please subscribe. Let's get into part three. Lots to do. Wow, what a day out there. It's really rainy. Um, I've just fitted the bridge block. So that's all ready to go on. That I think is the last barrier before we put the, uh, put the lid on. But first, it's time to come to grips with routing the neck. Routing out the the, the neck, uh, the pocket for the for the truss rod is has got to be my least favourite job in the whole of guitar making. It's it's scary, it's noisy. Um, you really want to get this right. I've traced in my dimensions just roughly so you can see where I'm going. I'll uh, drop the drop the router and we'll just go down here and we'll just keep it nice and steady down the middle. So that's really the plan, get down that center line. Noisy, dusty, scary, sharp, nasty, nah. So you can see that drops in nicely, it's tight and it's deep enough, That's, that'll be fine. I have to make this bigger and deeper to accommodate this, so I do that by hand normally. I can do that. Widening it's not too bad, it's uh, getting it deep enough that's the problem. Getting it deep enough, getting it the right shape so that we can stick that in the end. Stick the truss rod in and make it fit. Yeah, we're getting there. And we'll just keep offering that up until it fits. Oh, <laughs> we're there. Uh, that now gets hidden under there and that will go away like that. And that will go on there like that. Cover that. Yeah. I suppose the next thing to do is to radius that fretboard and start thinking about cutting some fret slots. Just been on the bandsaw, taking off the sides of the neck. Um, I could have filmed it, but you need both hands for some things and I'm sorry, it just takes time. I want to make progress. But I have actually just just literally bands all them off. I have taken them off and it leaves us with a neck. I then quickly use my block plane and a scraper just to tidy up these edges a bit. So I've just left a little bit on the edge to take off. I suspect I'll actually end up with a thinner neck than the one I've actually marked out. Um, the original headstock's a bit of a cricket bat. So I'm going to try and do something a little bit daintier with it, maybe make it a bit narrower, a bit thinner, I'm not sure. I think that's going to be a work on the fly. So it's that time. It's that time that we all love in guitar making. This is called closing the box. We take the bottom of the box, we take the top of the box, and we close it. And that will be it. You'll never see the light of day again. Well, we'll be drilling holes in it, but... Tight bond. It's just the best glue uh, for wood ever. So let's get stuck in. Clamp time. Clamped. 24 hours. Probably done, don't you? It's probably dry, but let's take some of these clamps off. So let's just do it. Look at that. 
the next job of course is to take that lip off. It's musical. Sharp chisel. Use the chisel that way round. Don't use it that way round. If you use it that way round, it'll dive into the wood. If you use it that way round, it'll dive out of the wood. There we go. Lovely job. So satisfying. And I'm going to stop when I get to the bottom of that curve because I do not want to go the other way. You've got to watch the grain because the grain will lead you to your death. It's like the Jonah of the whole affair. There we go. Just want to get this close enough so that I just have to sand an insignificant amount off. We're going to be uh, radiusing the fretboard, which means putting a nice curve on it. And I uh, thought about this a lot. I mean, the original one had a radius of about 10 inches. I think I'm gonna go for a, a flatter radius. I think I'm gonna go for 16 inches instead. Um, the reason for that, I think, is playability. Uh, it doesn't choke strings when you bend. I, I think it's, it's good to have a flatter, flatter fretboard for modern music because we bend so much more. We selected a rosewoody looking um, wood. It's nice, whatever it is, and I think it's got a nice texture. What I've done, all I've done, is literally cleaned it up, and I've uh, stuck it down with a bit of double-sided tape. So the next thing to do will be to take my radiusing jig and put that over the top and attach my router to it, and that will go up and down. And on each pass, I will change the angle. This has already got the 16-inch radius in it. Now, I'm sure lots of people make this sort of rig, but uh, this one from Guitars and Wood really is absolutely splendid. I thoroughly recommend it. A wonderful company came up with uh, a great idea for uh, guitar makers and making routing bits with three blades on them, like this one. So this one, as you can see, is a, is a threezer, which means there's an extra cutting blade, which makes it a little bit smoother, um, faster, and it doesn't take chunks out. Yes, all of this is necessary. So there we are, all radiused up, that's 16 inches. Great device from GW. I absolutely love it. it. It does such a fantastic job, sorry about the mess. And now, we sand it with a radiusing block. These are fantastic. Again, from uh, Guitars and Woods in Portugal. Absolutely brilliant company, ruined of course by Brexit. So now we have to pay lots of import duties, but they're great value and they are just fantastic. Finally, after sanding and sanding, we're there. Now we've radius the fretboard, we need to mark it up for some frets. Um, and this rig basically has a fat slot and a thin slot, and the thin slot gives you the micro location for the blade uh, of your saw, and the big slot holds it absolutely flush. And what you're meant to do is just make a mark with your first cut. Once you've, you've made your mark, you loosen the screws here, and then you drop this guide rail with the fine slots in it down out of the way so that you don't ruin it and it's there for another day. I thoroughly recommend it. I'm not sponsored by him, but I think credit where credit's due. Nice piece of engineering. It comes with this. Um, you can buy these independently at GMC. One other thing to mention is this wonderful guard. Um, this is just a slot 
uh, just a, a strip of metal fits in the slot, goes in and locates it so it stops anything sliding around. So I've cut up all the slots in the neck and I've just balanced it on top of the neck there so you can see it. I'll give you a proper shot in a sec. Um, just so that uh, I can see where I am, uh, I put the nut on because it's very easy to forget that nut goes on and pushes everything else down a bit. So it's very important that you remember that the nut goes on. So I've done that and I've clamped it into position just to get a feeling of how it's going to be. And I think it's going to be rather beautiful. And flip it over, mark the underside of the fret of the fretboard. Got a nice little line there which I've drawn and I should be cutting down to that using my absolutely wonderful block plane. I should be block planing down here uh, until it's the right width. You'll see there I've got a little hole and on the other end there, also there, another little hole. Those line up with some nails I've banged into the neck. They're just locating pins, stop it sliding around when it's gluing. And there's another one at this end. And there's that nail hole which we saw earlier on. That's all going to get hidden now. Gonna put some glue on here, stick it on the top, clamp it, go to bed. No, I'm just gonna go and get some tea, I think. Meatballs. So, a bit of clamping required after this, but I'm just gonna use my super spreader, finger, uh, and get a reasonable amount of glue on here. Again, you know, it's not worth sticking, you know, that's too much, way too much. I don't know why I put that much on. Anyway, I'm gonna spread it all out with my finger. Um, when you do this, of course, you do not want to get foreign objects or bits of dust or bits of off-cut uh, wood, curly bits of shavings on here, because it will hold it away from the rest of the neck. And we don't really want this. This is one we want really stuck. Here we go. Now, hopefully, I can find these locating pins. Wow, I mean, I went straight onto that one. And that one as well. Jeepers. Let's fuse that together. It definitely feels like it's located. Use the radiusing bar to actually glue with because you've got an unusual shape here. But of course it's the right shape for the radiusing bar. So you stick it on top of the radiusing bar and that allows you to clamp it flat. So that's all clamped up, and I literally can't do anything else with that until tomorrow. If there's one thing that you want to be absolutely rock solid, it's gonna be the neck. Of course, the other genius about using the radius beam is that it clamps the neck absolutely flat. And even if there's a slight bend in the neck, it will be taken out. Clampageddon. it's time to prep up to put in the position dots. I sometimes have forgotten to put the dots on before you put the frets in. Huge mistake, because you've got to tear all the frets out, you can't do it. I'm in my kitchen. Why? Because I'm making the dot markers for the neck. Um, this is a piece of brass that I bought for a bridge project and never did, but I drilled some six millimeter holes in it, and um, I've just filled it up with Fimo, which is a sort of uh, oven hardening uh, clay. You stick it in the oven and it goes hard in about 15 minutes at 110. So once you take them out of the oven, they're ready to go straight into the neck once they've cooled down. Just drill yourself your six millimeter holes or whatever diameter you've selected. Push them in, put a little bit of uh, super glue on there. No accelerator required, they set really quickly. And finally, just smooth them down with your radiusing beam to get them nice and flush with the fretboard and buff it all up to look nice. I'm now about to cut the pocket for the neck. I've made a template, it's on the top of the guitar, and I'm going to cut it out. Confession to make, yesterday I cut the pocket for the neck and uh, I forgot to film it. Uh, it went very well. The thing about um, routing is that they're scary. When I put the uh, router down, the router bit was out, put it down, cut my bench, and it's cut. And the neck is in, and it's at an angle, and I'm very happy. Just slots in, just like that. And it's not too tight, it's tight enough. Nothing holding that in at all. 
Wow, well, that's part three done. I'm working on part four right now. Um, so please subscribe and I hope to see you soon.